Also, I wanted to say something to you uh, about a very big and complicated future, and that is called education. We have been quite lucky because we launched we launched a program called Faith Education. The ISKCON devotees in England, with the help of the Hindu community, they actually launched something called Avanti Schools. And it has been accepted and has been success successful because of the big Indian community in Britain. They actually get financial support from the government and they can have a Krishna conscious curriculum. So amazing. But an, an Indian strong community of that type, like in Britain, is very hard to find. If you want to have a Krishna conscious curriculum here, you people would say, hey, you're indoctrinating people and this and this and this and this. So myself, I'm a great lover of Gurukula. Gurukula, the spiritual education for children, has been a dream of mine. One of my early dreams was I wanted to be a, a teacher in a Krishna school of the Krishna children. Srila Prabhupada had a different plan with me, but it was on my mind. When I went to Bhaktivinoda Manor, first time, and there was the, just the first European guru who had started, I actually approached and offered my services as a, as a student teacher. Anyhow, I was a leader of Sankirtan, and they said, nice you want to be a teacher, but your job as a Sankirtan leader is more important, so you can just forget about it. So, you know, Sankirtan is always highly appreciated because temples need money to maintain and Gurukuls also need money. So anyhow, when I went to Brazil, I started my first Gurukul. 100% Krishna Conscious School. It opened, stayed open until I left Brazil. After that, I reached Colombia, I started my second guru. It opened, we constructed a building for it, we had one of our best headmasters, who is a sannyasi today, Bhagavan Maharaj, he was the headmaster, and we had a very good running school in Varshana. So school, School was on my priority list, even I financed it myself. Of course we have a problem, especially today. Our problem is that we have to volunteers all over, and the school cannot be too far away from the parents. It's not a good idea, at least not for us. What happened afterwards <coughs> is that Bad news was coming from the U.S. Really bad news about things happening in the Guru Kuls in the U.S. And when I heard it from U.S. and from India, my heart was shaking. Because I was working in countries which were military dictatorships, where fascism here you talk against fascism, their fascism rules. Especially in those days. Nowadays a little different, but those days, oh my God, you know. If you ever heard of the program Condor, then you know what I'm talking about. It is one of the most bloodiest fascist coup in the world. In perfect nuance or teamwork with Opus Dei and the Catholic Church. Just to add it here, no? So, and they hated us because we are the other religion doing things. So if in South America, in any of our schools, 
a sexual abuse or something like this would have happened, they would not have only closed the school, they would have really closed the whole movement. So when I heard about these things from the US, I got so scared, I said, I cannot afford it. I am not strong enough for this. And my potential or my, my managerial position here is very weak. I can't do it. So I called all the parents and told them, dear parents, we have to close our schools. If you want to make schools yourselves, like homeschooling type of things, under your responsibility, I try to help you, but our official ashram schools with little boys, with all dressed in saffron and little ponytails dancing, which are so beautiful. The gurukuls are so beautiful. The children have such a beautiful experience there. But I said, I can't afford it. The most unhappy about it was myself. Because I really loved them. And I've seen them because I started my own gurukuls. I gave classes in my gurukuls. I went there and saw the kids. They were delighting. They were bright and was happy. Anyhow, for many years, we did other things and we had no gurukul. All teaching had to be done on personal, private uh, responsibility. Then I used to say to the parents, send your school, your boys and girls to village schools. Don't send them to the big schools in the city where the degradation is more rampant. Send them to village schools and give them as much teaching because that's another thing. I noticed when we had the schools that the parents are not taking enough responsibility for the children and their education. They were actually too neglectful, financially above all. And sometimes picking fights with the teachers or something like that. It wasn't really matured at that time. That was another reason I said better to discontinue this. And if I discontinue something, I must honestly tell you, I don't discontinue things. I want to continue and improve. This is what I learned from my spiritual master, continue and improve. You know, but it was all the time on my mind and I was all, all the time suffering about this condition of our children, our sweet little children, even though I must say the children, they studied in the, in the village schools, they also graduated, they also became high school, some went to university, some went to manage temples. So it's not that all of them became karmis because we, we, we closed the schools. No, it's not so. That wasn't the experience. Anyhow, all the time I was thinking, what will be the future? How can we do this? How can we do, how can we establish spiritual education? Do we have any German translation? No. Anybody's translating? That should be the, if somebody, if somebody cannot speak English at all, then you should please organize, we should have a translation, please. Otherwise I will feel bad again. Does if somebody cannot understand and like that. Anyhow. This, this should go on automatically. If somebody, other, other language translation. Anyhow, so, so the story of the education went that we wrote the documentation of the OIDA therapy, which is the documentation of the freedom of thought, freedom of religion, freedom of faith. And this developed in such a way that there was lots of enthusiasm for that. It's still going on. It's not completely finished. You can go to the internet, you can see, I can show you many things on Noida therapy. It's becoming better and better and better and better and better. It's being improved and we have very interesting response. Basically, the oil therapy is simply a turn back 
to having happy, healthy face in the transcendental, the non-visible, and not feel persecuted, nor ridiculed, nor stupid for having faith in this. This basic, you could say, Oida therapy is a very basic program, but as much as it is basic, it is important, because the first step is half of the way. If I have clear that I have a right and a need to believe in something, then nobody can come late and say, no, you don't have a right and you have no need to believe. There's nothing to believe in. No, you say, well, forget it, you know. You're Mr. Narrow-minded number one. You're a fascist. You want to restrict my rights to think and feel. So we developed that. And at that time, one of my disciples was working in UNESCO. So I presented the Oida therapy to UNESCO. And the, 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 the Oida therapy and the second idea of faith education was accepted by the UNESCO as a program of UNESCO Innovemos. This is a program where UNESCO is supporting and giving attention to different experiments or different uh, things which are offered by the community to improve the quality of education. So this, we actually got accomplished. This is very difficult. You don't get recognized easy by UNESCO. As a matter of fact, UNESCO first told me no. The reason UNESCO told me no, they said, we just want to get rid of religion in the education. We just want to go to secular. So then I said, can I please speak to your boss? I said, I don't accept that. Secular education has started a long time ago, and it's the problem. Look what it has caused. You cannot deny the attempt to create a non-sectarian concept of transcendence as a basis for healthy living and healthy participation in society. So I argued with them, and they agreed. They revised their decision, and they accepted both OIDA therapy and Feducación as an official UNESCO program. Then we had another good thing. Then the chief of UNESCO of this department got married to my devotee. <laughs> and that established us even much stronger with the whole edu uh, education programs in South America. But now we need the schools of faith education, and we already have five. Five places in the world, Chile and Peru, are in development of faith education projects. And they're working hard, they're making curriculums, and you see they're not Hare Krishna Guru Kuls. That I could not launch. They are schools with a theistic agenda and orientation. Non-sectarian, like OIDA therapy is non-sectarian. Those who don't know that OIDA therapy is different than OIDA Veda therapy. What we are practicing here in Krishna Consciousness, that's called, if you want to call it that way, OIDA Veda therapy. Because we practice spiritual life according to the guidelines of Bhakti Yudanta Swami Prabhupada. And that's Oida Veda therapy. But Oida therapy is not confessionally bound. Now, I talk about this enthusiastically because I know we have many children here too. And we we'll wonder very quick, just today, one devotee uh, girl asked me, well, how will I educate my children now? What will be my future in all this? Right here in the community. So, from that, we started these colleges, these, these schools. And we have a strong development with the backing of the University of Ancient Wisdom. You know what we are doing? We are creating a new concept about education altogether. We're building it up from the ground. And we are including the respect for the natives from the ground, something which never ever was heard before, that we have an education where the natives of the planet 
are being given the benefit of the doubt. You know what it means, the benefit of the doubt? It means if you don't give somebody the benefit of the doubt, means you're saying the guy is primitive, ridiculous. So if somebody is primitive and ridiculous, then why should you study what he says? So our native groups in the world, they have been presented as primitive and ridiculous in our educational system. In our faith education, no. Because we have the backing of the University of Ancient Wisdom, we have so many fantastic things we are offering which never been heard before, never been seen before. If you want to take time and maybe take, we, we are still installing the Google Translator and everything on the, there's already a Google Translator. <sighs> On, on the University of Ancient Wisdom, on face education. I don't think they have the Google Translator yet. There's many long texts, so long texts on Google Translator, they usually come out quite bad quality, but at least you get an idea what it's all dealing with. Now, with these five schools, and with the recognition of UNESCO, there is a movement going on. And I would predict that within 10 years, it's quite possible that we have 50 schools. It is quite possible. You have to see. Maybe more. But I conservatively, conservatively would say, within 10 years, we should have 50 running schools on the basis of faith education. Now, what we do not have, we do not have a Vaishnava dress code. But we will not have no dress code. If the natives come, we will encourage the children to come in their native dresses. Whoever wants to join the schools, we will see as many, as many open things to be, to be shown. You see, actually, I'm not a very qualified person for all, any of these things, I have to admit that. But I've been put into the midst of a revolution of education, connecting. I was requested by Mamo Antonino to establish education for the natives because they don't have any educational curriculum except the government curriculum. And that's what they don't want. They don't want the government curriculum. They reject that. So, and there's some other, like in Cauca, there's another part of Colombia, there's also many indigenous groups and Christian, Christians may, may, came in there and made curriculums, but the natives are also not being satisfied with that. Because specifically, since the Christians always cite with the neo-colonialists. Whenever the question of taking sides comes up, Christians will favor the neo-colonialists and everybody don't want to know any, hear anything about that anymore. So, you, you, can, you can imagine, here I am, just a simple little guy from Germany, and negotiating between the natives of South America, with the government, with the inspiration of India, the, the wisdom of the Himalayas, with our yoga schools, with our uh, connection with the, with the uh, rock stars, because the music, the Chasky Fest, is a very important part of all this. You may, it's amazing, but the rock stars, what happened, I'll tell you a story of Atikigua, Atikigua was sent by the uh, natives to represent them in, in the government of Bogota. This lady, she's so fiery and such a qualified woman. If you, if you meet her, you just start, your heart will be moved. She just gave a class in Puebla in the university and she had 300 people crying and crying. She's such a powerful, she's the Vandana Shiva type. 
So Atikigwa, she was only 21 years old. She got elected for city council representing the natives in South America. When she was elected, the, go the government said, no, we don't accept the election, she's too young. So they told her they, they to get out from the position. Then she went to, she went to meet uh, Evo Morales in Bolivia, the first indigenous president. And after that, she came back to Bogota. In the meantime, protests had been made there, and the government had reinstalled her as a, as a, as a city council because they said we have to accept her because she's specially sent by the indigenous. If the indigenous people send such a young person, we have to accept her also. So there was some conflict there. Anyhow, when she came back from, from Bolivia, from the first meeting on the rights of nature, we're talking here about six, seven years ago, the first big meeting on the rights of nature, after Bolivia installed the rights of nature, there was the biggest rock festival in all of Colombia going on, which is once a year, it's called Rock, rock of the Park. And some friend of hers, no, she had just returned, so they took her to the park. And she got to speak in front of 40,000 people. And she said, I'm not really coming here to ask you for a hand to help me. I'm just asking you to get your hands off me and let us defend our native culture. She gave them such a heavy talk. What happened? historically, that all the big rock groups, they went to side with her. And from that, can you please give me Abre Sierra de la Sebacata, there's a CD on, 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 on the table of, of... So, when the rock groups, when the rock groups joined with Atikigua, <coughs> They made the first nationwide movement for the defense of the rights of Mother Nature. And they produced a very interesting musical presentation of their music. By the way, today I am managing this musical presentation and I think it should be moved on a high level because we want to make movies and we want to introduce it on a very special way. This is the production, thank you. Abre Sierra Renace Bacata. It's a very amazing musical production where many, many famous musicians especially from South America mostly, they joined the fight for Mother Nature. This is the origin of the Chasqui Festival. This is where the Chasqui Festival was born, really. And this is seven years ago, but they have not stopped. Now, whenever they start meeting, have concert, they are presenting this, they are saying this, and so, and this CD and the Amazonas CD, which I'm also representing, you could say I have the rights for these CDs for distribution. Now I try to do what I can to distribute. Of course, they're Spanish productions, so they are not so easy to introduce in Europe. Even though the group, which is the main musical organizer called Dr. Krapula, He's actually famous in Germany now. They're coming and making big festivals here. They're getting more and more uh, popular, successful. Dr. Krapula. Krapula, Krapula. yes. Okay, yeah. So, now this is, but there's also, we just had a big festival in the Amazons, in Leticia, with Manu Chao and with the World Conscious Pact, and with very successful response 
by the community. In other words, a place in the jungles where nobody ever goes, all of a sudden musicians are going from all over the world and they're playing a big festival and it's getting coverage in all the newspapers. And it's something, you know, maybe very small result, but small or big. It's a change, it's a shift of consciousness which is taking place. And that shift of consciousness is now one of the more major features of what you may call face education. Because it's all connected. The University of Ancient Wisdom, Oida Therapy, Faith Education, Chaski Fests, the Eco Yoga Villages, the Natives, the Ikwa Shinduna, World Conscious Picks, it's all connected. And I'm just saying a few names. There's many, many more names getting involved. The Rainbow People have joined this effort. The Eco Village Movement from International, from, uh, from Scotland. There's a famous Eco Village in Scotland called. What's the name? It just escaped me. Uh, Finhorn. Uh, Finhorn. The Finhorn people are joined with this. The Finhorn people started the rights of Mother Nature with Munta Itu and joined together with Atikigwa and making a signature campaign with Avas. Right now, preparing for getting signatures from all over the world for the rights of nature and the work up team. What are we going to do to make the rights of nature become a feature? Abbas, they organized a demonstration against climate change and only in New York 400,000 people came. Only in New York. And our pact, World Conscious Pact was there. We had drama there, it was also covered. So, uh, it's, it's something interesting is going, it's on the move, no? And some other, in our own insignificant way, we are also part of this move. And in South America, it's not even so insignificant. In South America, it's kind of an important part. So therefore, faith education is a very solid step forward. We have music, we have movies. Oh, I discovered last night. You know, I wanted to make a movie about Theodora. Anybody remembers that? I was talking about Theodora, Theodora, let's make a movie about Theodora. Theodora is the woman who was married to Justinian, the emperor of Rome, who prohibited the talk and the belief in reincarnation in Christianity. Until that day, everybody who was Christian believed in reincarnation as a solid foundation just like we do. But after Theodora, reincarnation was banned. It was a big, big scandal in the church. The Pope refused to sign they tortured the Pope. The Emperor arrested and tortured the Pope. And the Pope was not ready to withdraw his protest, saying that originals cannot be condemned. He is right. <coughs> then the Emperor said, if you don't sign this concilium, then we will start killing all the Christians who still believe in your church. Then the Pope signed to avoid a massacre because he knew that this Justinian was quite capable of doing that. He had already killed 30,000 in one of these attempts to establish because it was about politics and the church wanted to, the, the, the emperor wanted to establish his reign over the church. And it had been only recently accepted that the church was state religion of that, of that type, of, of Rome and Constantinople at that time. 
So, this, at that time the Roman Emperor was, was acting out of Constantinople. So, it's a very interesting history. So, I wanted to make this movie. I spoke with Rasa Manjari, I spoke with, <laughs> with many people about, and I wanted to make a script. And yesterday, I discovered the movie, somebody else made it. <laughs> the movie is made. It's not with all the details which I wanted to put in there, but I have to admit, they put a few other details which I didn't know. It's well researched, it's well presented, it's a documentary, I can show it to you, it's in English, and it's in English and Spanish, perfect for me, and it documents how Justinian and Theodora worked it systematically to establish that it's prohibited to speak about reincarnation. That's where Christianity lost, lost the mystical input. And one of the reasons the movie says is because with reincarnation the final liberation and spirituality was up to the relationship between the individual and God. Whereas when only this one lifetime, either you do it, surrender to the church or you go to hell. By this, they could uh, dominate much more easy over the faithful people. And therefore they said, no, only by the grace of Jesus your sin will be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Otherwise there is no second birth, or third or fourth of his. It's one of the reasons this movie gives. And there's another reason it gives. That is... Uh, that when you deny Christianity, reincarnation, you are actually putting the, the emperor's order over the religious documentation. And that's exactly what they did. By, by doing so, they are neglecting the whole thing with the announcement of St. John the Baptist, who was supposed to be Elias, and if that's not so, then Christ would not be Christ. So that's what the Jews think. The Jews think that Christ has not appeared yet. They're still waiting for Christ because they do not Messiah. Hmm? They're waiting for the Messiah, it's not for Christ. What did I say? No, I say. Yeah, the Messiah is Christ. Wow. They're waiting for the Messiah, and, and, and but those... But for the Jews, Christ is not the Messiah. No, that's what I'm saying. They don't accept, they don't accept Jesus as the Messiah. And so if you cling out this whole thing with Elias and St. John the Baptist, then you also deny Christ. So in other words, the, 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 the Pope, or excuse me, the, the Emperor, he ordered a, a rule, if you pin it down by the logic, then Christ is not the Messiah. <laughs> so it's a very complicated thing, the documentary is very interesting, I would like to show it to you, we would have to connect the computer with the internet here, and our, in our slide, in our screen, then you could see that. So, this is very important documentation for South America. My God. Because in South America, every native already believes in reincarnation. Now they feel and can see from this documentary that they were cheated. That the original Christianity was not against re in reincarnation. It was just uh, the idea of an emperor for getting it, maintaining his power. So this is a very, very serious thing, sir. There's many shifts with this. I wanted to make this documentary. I don't have to do anymore. It's already done. Thank you. It's gone by the order of the emperor. I saw it last night. I discovered it. Huh? Krishna showed it to me. So, 
So you see this, for our foundation, for our education about Bhagavad Gita, original Christianity, the spirituality, the invisible, the transcendence, you know, all this which faith education and Oida therapy defense completely, <clears throat> that is putting us in a very, very solid chair, in a very solid position, plus it's humanistic, it's spiritual. It's, it's universal love promoting. It is, it is the only agenda, the only paradigm which can give us today a hope and a positive outlook on the future of this world. So this is what I wanted to tell you tonight.